what is a plant community? So, today I'm going to be talking about a particular plant that most people find quite difficult to grow. Um, and that is the Boston Ferns. So, I will admit, at the start, I haven't been very good at them. I've killed a lot more than I've kept. This is actually my newest fern. That's my oldest. I've had that one longer than this one. I just recently got this one for 50 cents at a Walmart. This is my oldest one now. Which, granted, I had to take the best care of. And yeah, we're kind of back at square one with a young plant again. So, I'm just going to do a care video on the Boston Fern. Because most people fell at these. And I figured out it's way more simpler than it really is. So... Where most people fell at the Boston Fern is um, they just don't keep it uh, moist, I guess, and uh, they allow it to dry out. I find that if you use soil that holds on the moisture more than you use, like, normal miracle Grow soil, don't, don't use that. Use... Use soil if you can. Wasn't able with this guy. But with this guy I did. If you can, use soil that holds way more moisture. It will really help your plant out by the long run. Uh, the most important thing is to really, really keep uh, keep your guy misted. Um... Of course, during the winter, when it gets darker, keep it closer by the window. Closer by the window. That's the main key. Um, during the winter, temperatures will change for your Boston fern. You want to keep it more into the 60 degrees and maybe a little bit cooler. Nothing down into the 30s, though. I say 40s, 50s at night is alright. Just, uh long as you don't see your fern declining. This guy, I have been managing to keep cool. Most of my plants that are in my brother's room that I'm cleaning up, I keep more on the cool side, no grow lights. I just kind of let them slowly grow, but not really grow. I keep them more on the dormant side. And that seems to be really working for these guys. Uh... So that's something that works for me. Whether it works for you or not, that's a different story. Um, of course, the less to play is really expensive. I won't really ever truthfully give up on it. So this is my baby. This is more my mature, but this is kind of older than that one, if that makes sense. Um, another thing... As long as you keep the soil moist, your fern should be fine. Mist it. You can mist it once a day, twice a day. I like to do twice a day just to be extra safe. Or take it in the shower. Well, not really in the shower, but like near where it could get humidity. They seem to really like that. You'll notice the fronds will start to kind of dance because they're absorbing all that water because uh not only do they get water from the soil but they get water from the air and it goes into the little fronds and the fronds absorb the water and therefore the plant gets water and it helps it thrive um yeah uh so keeping it on the cool side have seemed to really work for me of course you're always going to get on your ferns, like, let's see here, you're gonna get a little bit of a damaged foliage, you're gonna get some tips that'll die off, that's just normal, it's gonna do that, it's a fern, uh, don't expect it to look like 
something you'd see in the Victorian era or something like that. Because it's a plant. Don't freak out. Most people freak out and are like, oh, no, I'm killing my fern. What should I do? No, you're perfectly fine. Just let it do its thing and just trim the dead off if you want. Me, personally, I like to keep a little bit of dead on my plants. It looks natural. I like more of a wild side on my plants. Not really a uniform look. But that's me. I like to see how it would naturally look. But, uh, yeah, keep it misted uh, during the winter. Keep it cool. And another thing that seems to have really worked for me, especially my big old macho fern over there, is uh, I'll take them outside during the summer and uh, I'll put them in a shaded area. And that really seems to help them explode and grow. And uh, I will probably continue to do that. If it means I can continue to keep my Boston ferns and keep them happy and keep them growing, I will continue that method. And uh, I will continue to do that method. And of course, if it's a little chilly out and it's okay weather, like right now, it's I think it might be 60 degrees, I'll go ahead and put them outside. Extend their growing season. Why not? Just keep them in shade, though. Don't ever put them in direct sunlight or in a window that receives direct sunlight. Because that can really damage them. Uh, it'll damage the fronds, it'll fry the fronds. Your ferns, most of your ferns, besides tree ferns, won't really appreciate direct sun. There is some that can take a little bit of direct sun, like the macho fern. I... I've seen it take direct sun for about six hours, and after that, it doesn't want it no more. It wants shade. So, yeah. Uh, the moral of the story, they're not really all that hard, like people seem to think. Or have had no luck with. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had hard times with certain plants myself. For example, spathophyllums, or peace lilies. I can grow ferns, weeping figs, some of the more harder plants to grow. But as soon as it comes to something simple like that, well, well, you might as well just throw it away. Don't even give it to me because it's going to die. I had like three species of peace lilies and they were gone. That seems to be the thing when you start really getting into plants. You can take care of the harder stuff now, but you can't take care of the easy stuff. Stuff you started out with. Um, anyways, enough of that mumble. So, yeah, if you continue to do a good with your ferns, your ferns will start to put out these little spores on the end of the leaflets, which mine do not have, which you could do one or two things to propagate these at that point. You can take leaflets or fronds, cut a whole frond off, or just take... A little frond, like a little leaf, basically cut it off, put in an envelope, and you'll get these little spores in there. And these spores blow in the wind. And they naturally do that because that's how they spread. That's how they've always spread ever since a long time ago, ever since ferns formed, which was during the Jurassic era and beyond that. Um... So that's one way of propagation, if you want to be patient and do it that way. Or another way of propagation, which is what I did with this guy, is you can, when it fills out, get in there, take them out of the pot, and when you take them out of the pot, you can divide them, and you'll have these individual root balls. And these individual root balls will be individual ferns. It will happen is when you get into these individual little root balls, which I'm not sure you can see that good enough, is, and I found this out with some of my ferns, because I didn't know what it was at first, I thought it was weird, is you'll get these little round little tubers, and these tubers kind of look like potatoes, and you don't want to damage those in any ways, because that's where a new potential fern will come out. 
So that's one way that ferns also spread, is they go through these little roots, and at the end of these little roots, they'll form a fern, as long as you keep them moist. And that's one way of propagation. And that's one way you can do it, is by division. And then you'll have another fern. And that's how these ferns naturally spread in the wild, and they spread by little spores. Okay, sorry, I thought I seen a bug on her for a minute. No, that's just a, it's just a little bit kind of hurt. But uh, yeah, they spread by spores, and they spread by basically these little roots down here. The macho fern does the same thing. The macho fern is just basically a giant version of the Boston fern. Duh. But yeah, that's just an easy way of propagation. Um, ain't really no way of keeping them small. They will eventually get bigger. Uh, I say the only way you're really going to keep them small is if you keep dividing them, but then if you keep dividing them, you're going to have a whole lot of ferns. Um, but that's all right, because then you can sell them, make some money, or just put them in a garden somewhere. Um, outside, they don't like temperatures down into the 30s, really. Anything into the 30s could possibly harm your Boston fern. The appropriate temps would be somewhere into the 40s, which it can tolerate, and 50s. Anything lower from that, it can potentially harm them. Um, they are not frost resistant. They will not take frost very well. Um, otherwise than that, this is really all I got for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out. It really helps me get out there and uh, teach you guys about plants like these prehistoric beauties, the Boston ferns and other ferns. And I'll be going on about other ferns too, not just Boston ferns. So if you guys really want me to go into more fern care because I've got more ferns and no ferns are the same, each fern is different. I will definitely go into detail about more ferns. Of course, if you guys like this video, please leave a like, thumbs up, comment, share my video. It really helps me get out there more. Subscribe, that helps me out too. And uh, helps me teach people everything about plants. And eventually, I'm also going to be doing a video about plant poaching. Because it's something I feel like that needs to be brought up. Again, hope you guys enjoy this video. Have a good rest of the day.